It's possible that Martians exist. Possibly in the future. Instead of the sci-fi invaders, Martians would be humans born and nurtured on the Red Planet, and you're one of them on this episode. We've previously looked at what it would need to live on Mars in some of our prior episodes. However, it is only half of the tale. People would have to start producing babies in order to establish a permanent community on Mars. Some believe just 98 persons are required, while others say a minimum of 10,000 are required. It would only take a few generations, regardless of the size of the breeding population, to see a significant difference between Earthlings and Martians. Mars is the solar system's most Earth-like planet, but it's not the same as Earth. Human existence would be severely hampered by its gravity, atmosphere, and magnetic field. And obstacles are frequently associated with evolution. On Earth, children can have up to 120 genetic mutations. If you send those infants to Mars, they'll develop mutations that make them suited for life on Mars. Those mutations would almost certainly be passed on to their children. We will almost certainly be able to change our own DNA by the time we reach on Mars, putting Martian evolution on a fast track. You would be quite different today if you were born in the third or fourth generation of Martians. There's gravity, for starters. The gravity on Mars is only one-third that on Earth. As a result, your bones wouldn't be subjected to the same force. Your bones would become brittle and lose their solidity. It would become customary to break them. Then, there's the environment. You're used to a thick atmosphere on Earth that's primarily nitrogen and oxygen. On Mars, though, you'd be breathing a thin atmosphere made largely of carbon dioxide with traces of oxygen. You couldn't invent a whole new breathing system. However, you may come up with various strategies to deal with the shortage of oxygen. Capillaries that are more effective in moving blood and transporting oxygen to your muscles might be denser. Even with these advancements, you'd still need to live underground or in a house with strong insulation to endure the severe environment. Martians wouldn't need to be able to see far into the distance its life on Mars would be restricted to small confines. You will be nearsighted from birth. There's also radioactivity. The Earth's magnetic field shields humans from dangerous solar radiation. Mars, on the other hand, has a feeble magnetic field that is spread around the planet. On Earth, bodies create melanin. It shields us from the radiation that gets through Earth's magnetic field. On Mars, however, the radiation would be far higher and melanin would be ineffective. Carotenoids would be produced instead by your skin. By delaying or interrupting the cell cycle, this pigment can help protect you against skin cancer. Melanoma cells can potentially self-destruct when exposed to carotenoids. They're also responsible for carrot's bright orange hue. To put it another way, your skin would turn orange. Would you be able to visit Earth with all of these modifications to your body? Mars, on the other hand, would not contain the same germs and viruses as Earth. Your immune system would be less powerful than an Earthling's. As a result, the Earth may be a hazardous environment for you. Even if you had a powerful immune system, the Earth's gravity would be too much for your weak bones. You probably have to stay on Mars if you were born there. For a long time, humans have had the same appearance. However, after a few generations on Mars, we may develop orange, nearsighted humans who can thrive on less oxygen. And after we've successfully colonized Mars, we're unlikely to stay there. Human colonies on many planets, including those outside the solar system, may be possible in the future.